it's a, an ambitious set of measures to try to achieve the um, a more complex set of objectives, in fact. Um, it's not just uh, sustainability, but also security supply and competitiveness of the European economy. These are objectives which have been set for a long time and been pursued for a long time. I think there is an additional challenge which emerged over the last, I think, five years or something like that, the need to ensure that the energy system in Europe is resilient and can accommodate um, the penetration, the greater penetration of uh, renewable energies. Um, they are essential for security supply, they're essential for sustainability of the system. Uh, however, they pose some challenges and uh, create some opportunities, for example, for the involvement of uh, consumers. Uh, consumers are not, the only, are not only the main beneficiaries of the liberalization process, um, the creation of competition, um, something they've been pursuing for, for many years, but they can also provide value uh, to the system by uh, providing that flexibility that the system needs going forward. So I think it's, um, the winter package is ambitious. I think it goes in the right direction. We'll have to see how it survives through the legislative process, but I think the Commission has done the right move. Now, uh, meeting the Paris objectives, obviously you want, I mean the, the package is, uh, is aiming at put uh, the European Union at the forefront of the sustainability challenge and uh, I think this is the right direction also for meeting our um, um, obligation when it comes to reduction in greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Well, I think we need a new uh, governance framework because um, I think the Commission is right in proposing um, European-wide um, objectives, targets. Um, when the targets uh, are becoming more, uh, more challenging, uh, more ambitious, um, then you want to give the flexibility to the market, to the systems, to determine who is contributing to the target and to what extent each member state is continuing to, uh, contributing to the target. It obviously has to do with, um, with endowment of resources, with um, comparative advantages in different member states. So you want this ex extra flexibility, but then you also want a, a robust governance framework that um, ensures that the overall EU objective is, is achieved through the action, the coordinated action of the different member states. The simple answer is no. Um, I think the, um, we ourselves, a couple of years ago, we conducted a, an assessment of what are going to be the main challenges facing the energy sector in the next 10 years and what should be the regulatory response to these challenges. And we came up to a num with a number of proposals and I have to say I'm very pleased that the Commission has taken up most of these proposals. The Commission has actually gone even a bit further but if the question is, do we need today a European regulator um, to replace the national regulators, I think the answer is clearly no, today no. Even though obviously um, we have more and more aspects at European level which need to be treated um, uh, from a regulatory point of view at, um, at the EU-wide level. So we need, for example, um, we have for example wholesale markets and what I call um, horizontal networks where you need to have European regulators and regulation and where you need to have a European-wide approach to regulation and so it makes sense to have a European regulator for these aspects. On the other hand you have uh, steel retail markets which are um, national in nature still. Um, maybe 15 years ago we would have hoped to have a European retail market. Now what we're trying to achieve is to guarantee entry um, to national um, uh, retail markets so that you can develop competition but there's still national retail market and if a consumer in Spain mm -hmm. um, uh, f faces a problem I don't think that they expect uh, to call Slovenia, uh, the agency in Slovenia, they want to talk to someone in their language, in their culture, with their you know, knowing close to their problem. So I think when it comes to retail markets and uh, protection of consumers rights I think we still need um, uh, national regulation. So the challenge is to have um, to, to combine um, the importance still of national regulation but with obviously other 
uh, layers of regulation that has to be, when it comes to wholesale markets, as I said, and horizontal network, it has to be European-wide. Well, the paradigm of the energy sector is changing. And um, it's not only for member states, it's not only for regulators, but also for all those involved, all stakeholders who contribute to this change. Um, we, looking forward, if we just look at the um, electricity sector, for example, uh, looking forward, we need more, a more flexible sector. And this requires um, uh, traditional generation to become more flexible, but also requires a new segment of the economy contributing to to this uh, greater flexibility. So uh, we need, for example, aggregators uh, to come in and to help consumers. We need a new, um, we need ways in which we can engage consumers um, uh, who until now have been quite reluctant to, to, to be engaged. I mean, still um, the, the, the rate of switching um, of consumers in Europe is around 6%, which means that it takes um, 16 years for an average consumer to switch supplier. Um, we need a more, more engaged consumer, more empowered consumers. So we need to help them. Um, consumers do not want to spend a lot of time thinking about the technical details of the electricity sector. So we need to offer this um, in an easy way, in an easier way uh, for them to understand. They're much more active when it comes, for example, to mobile telephony or other aspects. Now, is, is the electricity sector so more boring or so more technically complex it is, but not as you know, not to the extent that um, uh, you justify this difference. So, and consumers can provide great value to the sector. So I think now we have we need a, com a concerted effort, and industry, the energy sector, the electricity sector, I think m must be the main contributors to this. It's not as I said, it's not just for member state. Member state, the commissions will um, set the way, uh, regulators will do their parts in trying to make sure that um, you know, uh, policy is implemented properly, regulation is in place, transmission system operators, they will have to support this, this um, paradigm shift, but at the end of the day, it's up for industry and consumers to make this happen.